So today what we're going to do is we're going to um, use an experiment to work out the specific heat capacity of water and then we'll think about what whether our calculations are accurate or not. Okay, so you're going to need a kettle and you're going to need a measuring jug. So please make sure you have permission to use those items. Be careful with the kettle, the water will be hot. At the bottom of the kettle, you'll see that there is a label that says the power of the kettle. Make sure it's empty before you turn it over. And you're going to want the biggest number that's on your kettle. So in this kettle here, you can see that it's 3000 watts. There is a range, but we're going to use the biggest of the range. And you also need a measuring jug. So your first task is to measure out 400 centimeters cubed of water. That's the same as 400 milliliters. You're going to put that into your kettle. Make sure that it reaches the minimum amount allowed on your kettle. If it doesn't, you're going to need to use more water. So you'll need to change the volumes of water in your experiment. You're then, then going to time how long it takes for the water to boil. And you're going to then pour that water away, preferably using it to use to make hot water or make some tea and be careful when you do that please and then you're going to repeat the experiment with three other volumes of water and you're going to complete your table so for example what i might end up doing is having the 3000 watt kettle and it takes about 50 seconds for um, the water to boil and so I'm going to use energy equals power multiplied by time to give me the energy that is actually transferred. So the energy transferred to the water is going to be that value here. So for this um, experiment, it's going to be 3000 multiplied by 50. Okay, and that's going to give me uh, 150,000 joules of energy. Now, I know that one gram of water has a mass of, um, so one centimetre cubed of water has a mass of one gram. Um, so I know that 400 centimetres cubed of water is going to be a mass of 0 0.4. So I'm now going to use my other um, equation, which is energy equals mass multiplied by specific heat capacity and multiplied by the temperature change. So I'm going to use that triangle to the temperature change. Now, the temperature change is going to be around about 80. The tap water is probably around about 20 and it's boiling. So it's going to get to 100. So we're going to make a bit of an assumption that it's going to be an 80 degree temperature rise. Now you can do that a lot more accurately if you've got a thermometer, but if you haven't, just use the value 80. So I'm going to put my energy into this equation now. So this is the energy that I've transferred, which is 150,000 joules. And that's going to equal my mass of the water, which is 0 0.4, multiplied by specific heat capacity. That's what we're trying to find out. So I'm going to put that down as an, as a, an X. And then I'm going to times that by 80, which is my temperature change. Okay, so the next job is to simplify. So 0.4 times 80 equals 32. And that's going to be 32x. So 150000 equals 32x. And then I'm going to rearrange the equation. So that means that I'm going to need to divide that by 32. And so what I'm getting, and so what I'm getting is the value here. So when I've done that calculation, I get the value 4,688. Now I actually expect water 
to have a specific heat capacity of 4,200. So it is quite a bit higher than what I'm expecting. And I want you to think about why that might be. Why are we higher? Why is the amount of um, water energy that's going into the water higher than what we're expecting? And how can we could be a lot more accurate? Okay, so if you decide you want to do the extension, what I want you to do is to work out the percentage error for each of the experiments. So in the example that I was giving you, uh, we've got a value of 4,688 as the specific heat capacity. And we want to know how different that is from 4,200, which is the actual specific heat capacity. So the first thing we do is take the difference. Okay, so the difference between those two is uh, 488. So then we divide it by what the actual should be. So we'll divide that by 4200. Zero, zero. And then we want it to be a percentage, so we multiply that by 100. And we get the value 11.6%. Uh, so our uh, calculation is 11.6% inaccurate. Okay, so I'd like you to send everything you do with me to me today, uh, and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye bye.